Okay, hey guys, how are you? It is Wednesday, a um, couple minutes late, but I am here. If you don't know me, I am a yoga instructor, a personal trainer, and a wellness coach. My name is Alicia Cross, and I've worked with clients and students just like you for over 18 years. Health and fitness is not my side hustle. I do this 24-7. I eat, sleep, and breathe this stuff. I have a holistic approach to health and wellness that incorporates the ancient teachings of Ayurveda and yoga with the modern sciences of exercise and nutrition. My mission is to show you that you are not stuck, you can make changes in your life, and the foundation of those positive changes that you want is good health. I help you to improve your health with yoga classes, semi-private training, wellness coaching, workshops, and tons of content including these weekly live videos every Wednesday at 10. So I'm here to motivate you, to inspire you, and help you cut through the confusion that's out there, especially when it comes to diet and exercise. And I want to keep you accountable so you can reach your goals and make those changes that you want to make in your life. So if you are here live with me, uh, please say hi, give me a wave so I know you're here. And whether you're watching live or the replay, you can post the question anytime um, and I will absolutely respond, either here or I'll type it in later. Okay, so today I'm talking about my story. How did I get here? Um, and this is an idea that I've had kind of in my mind for a little while if you've wondered um, what I did before fitness or before starting my business if you didn't know me uh, before I was at a gym um, or just how I came to be a fitness instructor, a um, yoga instructor, a personal trainer and how I came to own my own business. Okay, so let's go back. So like a lot of people, I have a story before I came to fitness and I started working at a finance company um, out of school and I could I could barely type this was this was back in the day so they hired me because um, they were growing really fast they just needed people on the phones and I did customer service and some I have some props here for this video so this was me I won an award it was like number one in customer service so that's me at the podium accepting my award uh, so yeah I, I did um, customer service took took phone calls all day long, um, my territory was the South, so North Carolina, South Carolina, um, some other areas around there. So that's who I talked to all day long. Um, and it was when I was there at the finance company that I started, if you saw the post I did, um, I don't know, a couple weeks ago, that's when I started going to the gym and when I started teaching cardio kickboxing. So I was working during the day, going to the gym at night, started teaching cardio kickboxing at night. Um, and this was when I also was taking other cardio kickboxing classes. So I would go to other gyms and take classes and there was a guy who taught at one of the gyms. He was also a martial artist and he um, came to the gym and taught kickboxing and he had a job where he, I, he worked with maybe at risk kids or maybe special needs kids, different needs kids with his martial arts and with exercise and I remember him talking about it one day with just so much passion that you know what he did for a living was very meaningful to him and I knew that I wanted that uh, you know I was I was lucky I had a job I had a full-time job working at this finance company but it did not light me up the way I saw his face light up when he talked about working with these kids and I didn't know what I wanted to do. I had no idea, but I knew that I wanted my face to light up when I talked about what I did. So that was kind of the first little inkling of where I wanted to go, because I was actually um, toying with the idea of going to school. My job did, um, you know, like reimbursement if I took business classes, and I was starting to think about that. But watching him tell his story and seeing his face light up, I knew that, that that working at a desk did not do it for me. So what I did was I went to massage therapy school. So there was a school in Baltimore and I went to, I quit my job at the office and I started going to um, massage therapy school full time. It was a full time program. Um, and that was just because, yeah, I was getting massages and really liked it. So like anything, if if I believe in it and it works for me, then I want to I want to do it. I want to share it. So I started going to massage therapy school, finished that, and ended up in Hawaii where I could not practice massage because I had a national license and they didn't accept that. Then, well, so, okay, so I'm in Hawaii, can't practice massage, 
but I'm teaching all of the classes, teaching um, at the YMCA and the gyms, and I had started taking Taekwondo. So I was also taking Taekwondo um, in Hawaii. In Hawaii is when I discovered the best yoga. So I had maybe taken a class uh, here or there, but when I got to Hawaii, that's when there was the best yoga. So I wrote about this in my post. I was at the YMCA, so I got to take yoga for free there because I taught classes. And here at that YMCA, I took Iyengar. We had a Iyengar certified teacher. I took Ashtanga yoga, so we had two Ashtanga certified teachers. So I did the primary series, the secondary series, uh, and then we had power yoga, vinyasa yoga. So I think like five, six days a week, I was doing some type of yoga, which was amazing. It was great. It was great yoga. And I mean, to do yoga in Hawaii, it was fantastic. So I was teaching at the gym, you know, boot camp classes and core classes and uh, taking yoga. And one day my, one of my instructors my yoga instructors asked me if I would sub for her because she was going on vacation. And I told her, you know, I was flattered, but I didn't teach yoga. And she said, well, you should. And that was Ayana. This is her photo. I have this, I keep this on my, on my altar. So Ayana told me about a yoga fit training that was coming to our YMCA and that I should take it. I should look into it. So I thought about it. And it felt, it felt really, it felt really heavy. It felt really heavy. It felt very different. Teaching yoga felt very different than teaching kickboxing or boot camp or core class. And so I was really wrestling with this idea of should I take this teacher training? So I talked to my Taekwondo instructor because I respected him a ton. He was Japanese Hawaiian and he you know, would say cool things like you're exactly where you're supposed to be um, and he would say, you know, you're like a sponge and you have to, to absorb more, you have to give away what you have. So I respected him a ton and I talked to him and, and told him, you know, that I was thinking about doing this, but it just, it felt, it felt heavy. And he said, no matter what level you're at, you have something to offer. So I did it. I signed up for the yoga fit training, um, out there in Hawaii. And shortly after that, my teacher Ayana, she took her first trip to Hawaii and um, she passed away out, excuse me, her first trip to India and she passed away out there. So that's why I keep her photograph on my altar. So if, you've, if you know anything about Hawaii, those are the mokes back there. Um, so that's her photo. I don't think I'd be doing what I'm doing or teaching yoga if it wasn't for her encouraging me to take that teacher training. So uh, next I'm in um, Guam and I am starting to teach yoga. I'm practicing massage therapy there because they have no <laughs> licensure in Guam for that. So I'm, I'm doing all the things, teaching, teaching yoga, teaching Pilates at this point, um, doing massage therapy, just working, going to people's homes and offices, uh, doing massage therapy. And then I moved to, well at this point I'm starting to get pain in my wrist. So then moved to Virginia and turns out I have a cyst and I have to get that removed. So that kind of stops me from doing massage therapy. But I was teaching all of the time. I mean, I must have been teaching at, I don't know, 10 facilities. I think I taught seven days a week. I taught everything you could possibly teach. And I taught everything. And as you know, though, you can't make a full-time living teaching. There's only so many classes you can teach in a day because they just don't offer classes all day long. And then you're, you're driving everywhere. So started looking at what my next step was. So we had this job opening at one of the gyms that was like a fitness manager position. And so I went in to talk to the general manager about just some of the job requirements. And one of the job requirements was that you are a certified personal trainer. And I told him, oh, I don't have that. I'm not a certified personal trainer. And he's like, you're not a personal trainer? He's like, you should absolutely be a personal trainer. And I thought, maybe I should be a personal trainer. <laughs> so it kind of planted that seed. I don't know why that kind of didn't occur to me or seem possible, but it's just not something I thought of until he said it. So one of my friends at the gym, um, he was a personal trainer, and I talked to him. So I talked to him about this 
personal training certification, NASM, and uh, the, the books for these are very expensive, and I think the way they do it is like you buy the book and it comes with the test, or you buy the test and it comes with the book, something like that. So he said, well, I'll loan you my book um, so you can study. And they offer, you can do self-study or they offer like courses or, you know, in-person workshops or some online uh, assistance in studying. And at this point I said, well, do you think I can, could, could I do it? Could I just study on my own and do it? And he's like, oh, absolutely, you could do it. So that, that right there gave me the confidence to, to borrow the book and to, to start studying um, for my NASM personal training uh, certificate, which of course I got, as you know, because here I am. And so I was working at the gym, uh, so I kind of let go of all the other places I was teaching and focused in at that um, WSC. So I was teaching still at the WSC, and I became an apprentice trainer, um, for sure. We just call that a floor trainer. So you had hours. You had to be there to answer questions. You had to be there to clean the equipment, all of the things. And it was a rough schedule because at that point when I was doing it, you had to be in at 5 a.m., and I think you had like four or five hours on the floor, and I would teach a class in the morning. And then I also had to come back in the evening, and I would teach a class, and I had to be there till 10 o'clock at night till the gym closed. So that was a rough that was a rough schedule. That was the only time that I got a B at, in my at, in at Nova. So I was taking Spanish at the time, and normally I got all A's, so I got a B because that was really intense studying for that certification, working those crazy hours, teaching all of the classes, and you know just starting to get established as a trainer. That was a lot. And then of course they changed those hours after my time had passed as an apprentice trainer, as a floor trainer, because they realized that you really didn't have anything to do there at 5 a.m. or 9.30 at night. People, you know, they were either coming in to get it done um, or they weren't going to be signing up for training at, at 9.30 at night. It just it just wasn't happening. So I was, I was glad to see they made those changes. Mm. So I get my personal training uh, certificate and certification, so I start training. Um, and here's those interesting coincidences. So um, they had a, a contest at the gym for the trainers, which I won. So I had um, just the most clients or the most sessions or something in this month. And I won a gift certificate for a massage. And that gift certificate for a massage was with Leah, who, as you know, owns the Meta Center where I teach now. So that's how I met Leah. I won that contest and I won that massage with her. So that's how we met. So I was her client uh, before I started um, teaching at the Meta Center. And this was when she was just renting one space. She was all alone, just that room. And that's when I met her. And that was probably 2011. Yeah, 2011. So that's how I met Leah. And as you know, now I teach there at the Meta Center. And now I want to tell, talk to you about manifestation. Okay, so in 2000, it was about 2012 probably, I was renting a room in somebody else's condo. So I had, I had one small little tiny room. I was working like crazy seven days a week, saving up my money because I wanted to buy a house. And even though I was saving my money, I did treat myself to this, got another prop. So if you guys have been to Paradise Springs Winery, I saw this picture, I fell in love with it, I bought it, and I knew that it would one day hang in my house which I did not have yet, but I knew I would. It was rolled up um, in a tube, and now it sits on my mantle, so I brought that out to show you. I also, at this time, made my Facebook page, Alicia Cross Training, that you are watching me on now. So I was just an employee at the gym, but I knew that I was going somewhere with this, so I made that Facebook page just knowing that something was gonna happen. So that was in 2012, and, and you know, not too long after, got my house, started my business, so definitely, if there's something in your life that you can um, send a message out to the universe, buy the thing or make the declaration or take that first step that even if you don't know, you know how it's going to happen, you're putting out there into the universe that that's what's going to happen. And so I'll show you something I'm working on now. So maybe it was, I don't know, maybe two years ago I bought this, Make Lifts, Not War. This is going to hang in my gym. I don't know if that's like my own private personal gym that I'm going to have in my house or if that's some kind of facility um, that I have for you guys. But I don't need to know the how. I just know that I'm putting that out there in the universe that it's going to hang up in my gym. Uh, let's see. So, okay, so I was working at the gym. I got my house in 2013. 2014, the gym announces they're closing. 
oh no, what am I going to do? Uh, so when I started thinking about what I was going to do, I could have stayed with that company and gone to another location, which I still would have been starting all over, or I could have moved to another local gym, again, starting all over. But I was hearing the rates that the trainers were making. So the price of training to the clients was going up, but the rate that was being paid to the trainers was going down. And this is why a lot of you guys tell me you go to the gym and you see the trainers and their babies, their kids. That's because they're not making a living uh, training. You know, they're making probably not much more than you know minimum wage, and you've really got to hustle, and it's a hard it's a hard job and they're not making a lot of money doing it. I actually have, um, when I started going to a gym, I got a membership at a gym, I noticed that the trainers would be training multiple people at one time. I would see them, you know, cueing this couple over here to warm up and cueing these two ladies on their abs and telling this guy what to do on the pulley machine. You know, I just watched them juggling the circle of clients and I, and I realized what they were doing is almost how uh, you know, my boyfriend Robert does it with um, physical therapy where, you know, your appointments, you may be seeing somebody for an hour, but your appointments are like 20 minutes apart. So you're seeing multiple people at one time. So even though these clients are paying full price for one-on-one -on -one session, these trainers are not making any money. So the only way they can make money is if they are double, triple, quadruple book booking people um, at the same time so that they can make a living. So I was watching, I saw that, saw that happening. Um, but let's see. So when I started as a trainer, as a floor trainer and as a new trainer at the gym, I gave assessments. So if there was a, a new member at the gym or somebody who wanted to do an assessment with me, I gave them their assessment. And if they wanted to then work with me, uh, they were my client. They signed up with me. By the time I was, um, the gym was closing, so that was in a three-year span, that um, method had changed. So the fitness manager was no longer a personal trainer they were more in a sales role and they would give the assessments and then sell training memberships we'd moved over to the membership structure rather than packages and i have no problem with memberships i think that's an important um, accountability um, tool for you as a client um, and i do think it's important to help you to stay on a consistent schedule if you have that membership. You know that every month you're going to have your four, eight, or 12 sessions to use. I, I love that model. But the problem that I saw was that you, as the client, you did not know who your trainer was going to be. Your, your contract was with the gym, and they would put you with a trainer. But then you have the problem of these trainers making less and less money, so the turnover is really high. So your trainer leaves, but you still have this contract with the gym. And I knew that one of the most important um, factors in your success is our relationship. So the gym was getting away from the relationship being with the trainer and made it more about the relationship or the contract with the gym and the trainer was just replaceable. And I did not agree with that at all because I had people actually move to me from other trainers that they had issues with because they just weren't a good fit. They didn't get to pick their trainer. They didn't get to meet with their trainer for that assessment to see if that was somebody they wanted to work with. Um, and, and you know, that's just not saying something about that trainer. It could be anybody. Somebody could be a not, not a good fit for me. I passed off, you know, clients to other people because they weren't a good fit for me. So you, you need to make sure that, you know, it's like we're auditioning each other. We need to make sure we're a good fit for each other. Um, and that was not happening at the gym. Um, let's see. So I was in this situation knowing that I would be starting all over again for very little money, and I did not like the direction that it was going in. So I decided that I was gonna start my own business so I could do my own thing. I didn't know how that was gonna happen or what it was gonna look like, but I knew that I had to stay true to what I believed in, um, this relationship and doing what was best for the clients um, and not what was, you know, mandated by the contract that they had with the gym. So fortunately, I had clients who could help. I had a client, uh, my client Kurt, who owned a business. So he kind of helped me with some of the technical stuff that I needed to get started, put me in touch with the right people. And then, of course, Carlin, who's awesome with social media and websites. And I just said, hey, will you help me? And her answer was just yes. 
So she helped me get all that stuff started. Um, so my website, um, I remember her explaining to me what a hashtag was back in the day so I could learn all about how to use social media for my business. Um, so I got that going. Um, oh, and yoga. So I knew that I wanted to um, continue to teach yoga because I absolutely saw that the clients, that my clients who did yoga with me also did better. So that just worked out again. The stars aligned. Um, Leah, like I talked about, the massage therapist, she had moved into that bigger space that now had a studio and she was looking for, for a yoga instructor. So when I told her as my massage therapist, you know, what was going on with the gym, she was like, okay, let's talk. We got this space. So that worked out that I was teaching um, yoga there in that space. Um, and then also training clients um, in home. Um, I had a client who owned a business and he had a gym in his office, so I went there to do um, corporate classes. I'm still there now, four days a week. So everything just really lined up for me. Let's see. Okay, so I started my business, and I named it, of course, Alicia Cross Training, because that's already what I called my Facebook page, and I just named my Facebook page that, I guess, because I didn't really know what else to call it. I didn't know what it was going to look like. But two, I also wanted you to know that you were working with me. This was, this was the relationship that we had cultivated at the gym and it was going to continue now in my business. Again, I knew that the relationship was huge in your success. So I wanted you to know that you were working with me. You would be training with me. And also, if you know, um, cross training means doing different things. So if you are a runner, you cross train with spinning classes. If you are a cyclist, you cross train with um, strength training. So it's doing other things, which, which makes you better at your chosen sport. It also helps to prevent injury and just makes you more well-rounded. So cross training is something I absolutely believe in. I talk about doing all of the things. So it's important that you are doing your strength training, your cardio, your yoga, stretching, um, core training, uh, finding other things that you love. So cross training was something I absolutely believed in and it is my name, so it's a perfect fit. Uh, so that was just a no-brainer. That had to be it. So Alicia cross training. I could not pass that up. That was really good. And what I also really love is that the initials of my business are ACT, ACT. In 2016, I got to see the Dalai Lama speak. So remember I told you about my client, Kurt, who helped me start a business. He got me into the Institute of Peace where he was doing some work and I got to see a private talk by the Dalai Lama. And his message, the Dalai Lama's message was, um, it's not enough to pray, you also have to take action. And that resonated with me so much because as a yoga instructor, um, I really see that, saw the importance of you know, mindset and affirmations, but then also as a trainer, I knew you got to go do the work. You just have to, you have to do it. You have to, you know, put down the journal and get up off the yoga mat and you got to go to work. You need both things. So I love that the initials of my business spell out act because it is all about taking action, doing the thing. There's a line from Eat, Pray, Love. Uh, you can pray to win the lottery, but you also have to go buy a ticket. And that's absolutely true. And let's see, I think it was Amy Poehler's book. Yep, she talked about um, the thing. Talking about the thing is not the thing. The doing of the thing is the thing. And I think a lot of us need more doing of the thing. You know, we get stuck in that analysis paralysis. You know, we want to find the best diet and the best workout. And, you know, when should I do this? And what should I drink? And what should I eat? And uh, just do the thing. <laughs> That's what's important. So take action. And do all of the things. Cross train. Do all of the things. Uh, so I think this is kind of all I wanted to tell you about. So my previous life, my past life working at a finance company, getting into cardio kickboxing, um, becoming a massage therapist, uh, becoming a personal trainer, and then the universe just, of course, it looked like the worst thing in the world when my gym was closing, but that was a gift because here I am running my business. Um, manifested, manifested that, so manifesting some more things along the way, um, and here I am. So that is my story. And what I hope that you see is this did not happen alone. This happened from um, nudges from the universe, even if they looked scary and bad at the time. It came from support and help and encouragement from other people who um, believed in me and, and helped me along the way. And I want you to know that whatever path you're on, whatever you're working on in your life, you 
don't have to go at it alone. You need that same help and encouragement, um, that support along the way. And I would love to help you. So if there's something you're working on in your life or in your health and you need some encouragement, you need some support, you need some guidance, message me here or send me an email anytime, alicia at alishacrosstraining.com. And let's talk about how I can help you because, again, everything that I do, everything that's worked for me, I want to bring it to you so that I can help you. And if you liked this video, give me a like and maybe even a share. If you got a question that you want me to address in a future video, post it here in the comments. If you have a question, please post it and I will get back to you. And I look forward to talking to you next week. All right, thanks guys. Bye.